All right, good evening. I'd like to call the King George County School Board meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. United States of America to the Republic. All right, at this time, uh, Ms. Tolliver, are you, are you on the line with us? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, can you please state um, your uh, reason for participating remotely? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to request permission, permission to participate remotely for tonight's meeting as I'm out of state for a family medical emergency. All right, thank you. Do we have a motion to allow Ms. Tolliver to participate remotely this evening? I move that we allow. Kristen Tolliver to participate remotely due to a family medical emergency. Yeah, a second. All right, well, I will second it. Um, is there any discussion? All right. Call a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Ms. Tolliver, you may now participate remotely this evening. Thank All you. Right. All right, thank you. Okay, so moving on next, we will have the public hearing and public comment on the FY22 budget. I do not see any um, folks in person who are signed up. Mr. Vance, are there any online for public comment for the public hearing? Okay, for, for the public hearing or for general public comment? Okay, so that means, and so that will, I guess, conclude our public hearing on the FY22 budget. All right, so at this point, we will move on to recognition. Uh, we'll start with the King George County School Board, Dr. Benson. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Last meeting, we had the opportunity to uh, to recognize you because February is uh, School Board Appreciation Month. Tonight, I have from the Virginia School Boards Association uh, certificates for each of you in recognition uh, of your participation professional development events and in appreciation for your dedication and service to excellence and education on behalf of the students in the of Virginia. So again, we thank you. Um, we question about the I'd like to make some difference to Mr. T.C. Collins. Ms. Carrie Gonzalez. Ms. Gail Hawk. Ms. Gina Pinsera. And Ms. Collins, I have you as well. All right, thank you, Dr. Benson. Can you hear me? All right, all right, at this point, we will have recognition of the Be Healthy poster contest winners. Ms. Richard is here. This this evening, Ms. Richard. I think so. Maybe lift it up a bit. So Good evening, members of the board. Tonight, I would like to recognize the winners of our Be Healthy poster contest. In December, I worked with Mrs. Fisher and her reopening subgroup to create and organize a poster contest for all students in King George County Schools to raise awareness about being healthy, preventing illness, wearing a mask, and washing hands. We had over 50 students from kindergarten through eighth grade enter the contest, and we are pleased to announce our winners. For the King George Middle School category, first place, Nathan Roby. 
second place, Kiera Rivera, third place, Kelly Kilianis Paltra Garcia. For the elementary grades four through six, we have Abigail Shones, who I believe is participating remotely tonight. Second place, Nadia Ashton. Third place, Emily Drinks. In the elementary grades K through three, first place, Jasmine Ashton. Second place, Delaney DeSantis. And third place, Reagan Severe. Their artwork is being printed and will be hung across the district in all of our schools. We are proud of each of them and their hard work. We're also very pleased with all of the entries and choosing the winners was no easy task. We would like to thank everyone who entered the contest. And we have many of our participants here this evening. I have certificates for them, as well as their original artwork and a copy of their artwork printed on cardstock so that they can save it as a memento. Bring them down as we treat them. We'll get a picture. Yes. If you are here for the Be Healthy poster contest, would you please come forward at this time? Can you spin down a little bit so that you're not so close to the other thing? <laughs> Good call, Mom. Just trying to keep everybody safe. Thank you to all of our young budding artists. I know I enjoyed reviewing the posters and um, voting on them, so that was a lot of fun. I hope everyone is getting a chance to look at the, to view the posters um, on the on the display here this evening. They're all very creative. Yes. Mm -hmm. Miss Richard, are you done? Okay. Yeah, this, are you done? I'm ready for the okay. next one. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Um, in the summer of 2019, I was contacted by Mr. and Mrs. Bradshaw about organizing a scholarship program for our fifth grade girls at King George Elementary School to attend Space Camp. In November of 2019, we selected the first recipient of the Broadwood Space Camp Scholarship. Abigail Dunn was able to attend Space Camp during the summer of 2020, despite her first choice of weeks being canceled due to COVID-19. This year, Mr. and Mrs. Bradshaw wanted to open the opportunity up to all girls in fifth grade from all three elementary schools. So a digital application was created and shared with all fifth grade girls via Canvas. The STEM teachers shared about this opportunity with our students during our class time. 
and the students had almost three weeks to complete the application online. The application required essays, teacher recommendations, parent recommendations, and all were submitted electronically. This year, we had eight applicants complete our, the rigorous process. A team was made up of three King George Elementary School teachers, two engineers, and one adult advanced Space Camp Academy graduate scored the application. Tonight, I would like the school board to recognize Faith Weber as the winner of the Broadwood Space Camp Scholarship for the 2021 school year. Faith's achievements in academics as well as in her community service were one step far apart from the other applicants. Faith's application is outstanding and her teacher recommendations are not perfect. I look forward to hearing about Faith's Space Camp experience and having her share with the next year to make her I'd like to recognize the other young ladies for their efforts in the great applications of health. Academic achievements and their leadership skills. Those students are known to labor, Lauren Holly, Lauren Martin, Lauren Frank, John Murray, Lauren Boyd, and Molly Hunter. I would also like to recognize Nick Kennedy Bradshaw for seeing the need to develop a lot of STEM on an early age in girls and fulfilling this need by creating the broader space in itself. Funding it for two years in a row. I look forward to continuing the partnership and the conditional service. If you are one of our space camp, uh, could you please come forward at this time?
Okay, Mr. Banks, are we good to go? Okay, thank you. All right, thank you everyone for bearing with us. At this point, we will resume our meeting um, and we will move on to public and employee comments. Um, so please state your name and your address. You will have three minutes for those making comment online. I will let you know when you have 30 seconds remaining. Um, so in we have uh, Mr. Grant Dunn. Good evening, Dr. Benson and the school board members. My name is Alec, my name is Grant Dunn, and I'm in the eighth grade and a student of the King Brick Middle School. Prior to the board's discussion this evening, I would like to follow up on the benefits of Bring Your Child to Work Day. Bring Your Child to Work Day is a national recognition program that allows, uh, that gives children a glimpse into the working world and allows to see what their parents and other parents do for a living. Despite these benefits, three years ago, participation in this event was changed from being an excuse absence to an unexcused absence from school. As we look forward to a life without COVID, I ask to, to consider allowing those students that have a prearranged permission from the school and their parents to be marked excused during participation in the national event. Thank you for your uh, consideration. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. All right, and at this time we will move to on um, individuals online. So I believe it looks like we have them. Is Rachel Scott on the line? Grant, Grant, you want to stay? Hello. Online? Hello. Hi. Uh, yes, we can hear you. My name is Rachel Scott, and I am I live at 12097 Cobblestone Court. Um, good evening, members of the board. Last week, you were presented with three different options for moving forward with the education of our children. I expect there will be a vote on these options tonight. The options were presented in order of preference, with the hybrid option being ranked third behind 100% virtual and the 100% in-person being the preferred. If you feel you cannot vote yes to the hybrid option due to the instruction time being cut in half, please vote yes to the 100% in-person option. The hybrid option is being presented because of the high rate of student failure in the 100% virtual option, and parents have been imploring the board for an in-person option. Even though 100% virtual doesn't cut down on the instruction time, the quality of that instruction time is decreased significantly compared to any in-person options as evidenced by the significant increase in the number of students failing. The reasons you can say yes to the 100% in-person option are, number one, all teachers that want a vaccine have had a chance to be vaccinated. Number two, the schools are equipped with an air ionization system to mitigate the risk of virus spread through the air. And three, students and teachers will be wearing masks. If you feel you cannot vote yes to the 100% in-person option due to capacity and not being able to maintain six feet of separation between people, I want to emphasize that that separation guideline has been just a guideline. And the CDC has said to do this when able, meaning they know it might not be possible to do this 100% of the time or to the full extent of six feet. But with the other measures in place and good hygiene measures being observed, this is not required for a safe return to in-person. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Scott. Mr. Brandon Haga. Good 
Excuse me, ma'am, can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right, good evening. My name is Brandon Haga and a King George parent. Uh, last month, I sent an article to all of you on a study conducted out of Duke University on in-person learning and the spread of COVID. In the event you failed to read it, Duke's study found that with public health measures and stringent policies in place, in-person learning does not lead to the spread of the coronavirus within schools. A statement coming out of that study by Dr. Danny Benjamin, who is a professor of pediatrics at Duke University stated, community transmission should not influence the decision as to whether or not schools open. Schools opening is simply a question of leadership. If you have strong leadership, you open and you open safely. And if you have weak leadership, you either stay closed or you open and you affect a bunch of people. I wanna say that again. Community transmission should not influence the decision as to whether or not schools open. Schools open is simply a question of leadership. If you have strong leadership, you open and you open safely. And if you have weak leadership, you either stay closed or you open and you infect a bunch of people. Based on Dr. Benjamin's statement, combined with schools that have been open across this nation, even in this state since August, why does King George continuously fall under the category of weak leadership? Dr. Benson, I would like to yield the rest of my time to you to explain if community transmission has influenced your decisions in planning. Additionally, I would like you to speak to why King George has yet to figure this out while peers in your profession have had kids and seats since August. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Haga. Ms. Susan Park. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right. So that concludes our public and employee comment for the evening. At this time, are there any changes to the agenda? Madam Chair, could we move um, that um, when your child is looking forward to the is here? Do you mind? Certainly. Um, Can we just further just take the discussion items and put it before the action items? So we can all this reflection just taken care of. Certainly, we can do that. Okay, so at this time we will move into our discussion items. Um, we can do bring your child to work day first. Dr. Benson. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Um, as requested last meeting, I brought to you uh, a draft proposed regulation. Here, give me one second to find it. So this draft regulation um, will support our attendance policy, um, and it does specify then take your child to work day as a um, as a uh, viable reason for an excused absence. In your packet. It is uh, JED is the policy dash R for regulation. So I've underlined in there the draft language, language uh, uh, in particular that references take, take, take your child to a work day. Um, this language is all draft as a regulation. It's pulled directly from our um, family handbook. So we simply took our family handbook language, placed it into a proposed regulation for your consideration uh, and made sure to make specific grant preference to take your child to work day. All right, thank you, Dr. Benson. Any questions? Comments? I, I, of course, agree with the new policy. And when it comes up for action, I will do this. Madam Chair, I'd, I'd like to note that uh, when in the past 20 plus years, I was attendance officer for all the schools, the division, and uh, helped draft the policy and implement the policy. And we did allow for absences for children to attend the uh, bring your child to work activity. So it is it is not a new idea and it's a very positive idea. So I certainly support it. Okay. Ms. Pantera? Yeah, um, I, I think it's a great idea. Um, and I'm glad that um, Grant, you, you brought it to our attention that it um, had been excluded. Um, I wasn't aware of that. I know that um, I've had I have children that have participated in that, and, and it's a great experience for the kids and for the parents. 
um, as well. So thank, thank you, Grant, for bringing that to our attention. Ms. Tolliver, do you have any discussion? Um, no, I also think it's a great idea, and I, I don't recall there were being moved to an unexcused absence. I don't want to thank um, Grant Dunn for his presentation and for his um, persistence in getting this matter taken care of for us. All right, thank you, Ms. Oliver. And I certainly echo my colleague's sentiments. Uh, thank you, Grant, for coming and bringing this back to our attention. I know my son just turned six, which where I work is the cutoff for bringing kids to work. So if we weren't in the midst of a pandemic, I was looking forward to bringing in this year. Um, so certainly a worthwhile endeavor. And I too am excited to support having that return to being an excused absence. I guess my only question is, Dr. Benson, do we know what happened as to why that fell off the excused absence list for reasons? I don't recollect specifically. I know that coincides with the time where the state had come out with um, uh, attendance. Well, it still is attendance as a um, a marker for accreditation. So I imagine that the conversation there, if it, was, if it was conservative about which absences would be excused, would be related to that change of the state. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. I do have a question, Dr. Mm -hmm. Benson. So I know a lot of times, um, you know, we'll get recommendations from. Uh, the VSBA on changes to our policies, and we just pretty much accept them for the most part. Um, is it possible that maybe this is, is something that now that we've added it in if, and it's not part of the VSBA, that if they go in and make other changes, you know, how can we make sure that this doesn't fall off of our policies? It's a good question. And because this is a regulation, this is local, so the VSBA will advise as far as policies, so a non dash something in this case a dash r so they'll they'll advise in terms of the policy and then locally we'll develop regulations that will support that policy so we won't lose this that makes sense. <clears throat> okay all right thank you all thank you again grant for coming this evening uh so moving on to our other discussion item which is the bus garage garage wan connection dr benson thank you madam chair and members of the board um before you this evening is a discussion item um, our technology department has continued to do their best to support our transportation facility, which is located out on 301, uh, separate from our central school board office. Um, currently, we only have a 100 megabyte uh, connection to transportation with the rest of our, um, our wide area network. And we are experiencing difficulty given the amount of traffic with both phones and data running across those lines. So the recommendation is that we uh, look to lease fiber uh, at a cost of $10,560 um, a year to increase our connection speed to 400 megabits. Um, and it also offers us the opportunity to have the vendor monitor the status of the line so that if there were a problem, the vendor then would notify us immediately. Um, this will be very helpful to increase certainly the reliability of our phones, transportation. Uh, and if you've been out there, transportation is a bustling, bustling center of communication with families and that type of thing. So we appreciate your consideration. The good news is that um, we anticipate that at least half of this cost then would be would qualify for E-rate uh, reimbursement back to the county. So we do thank you for your consideration as a discussion. Item. Is there any discussion? Do we, uh, Dr. Benson, do we have any idea about the length of time this will need to be implemented? I mean, when do we be up and running by September? Yes, by the fall. Is the anticipation. Good. Ms. Tolliver, any additional comments, questions? No, thank you. All right. Um, Dr. Benson, uh, when do you need action, a decision from the board on this? We can move it to action next meeting. meeting. OK, thank you. All right, so that concludes our discussion items. At this time, we will return to our action items for this evening. Uh, so first we have our in-person learning for grades three through 12. Thank you, Madam Chair. And again, as, uh, as promised uh, during our Wednesday work session of last week, um, I offered to bring to you uh, updated metrics as of today in terms of the, the VDH and CDC um, metrics for school openings. Um, so you'll see that uh, I always offer the, the two, um, the previous board meeting, the top of your handout and the bottom, uh, is today's data. And so the encouraging, while we're all in our region uh, still in the highest level of highest risk of transmission in schools, um, the good news is that both case incidents 
and positivity are moving in the right way. And this last two weeks, they've moved quicker than I think I've seen in the last two and a half months. And so I think that further uh, solidifies what I've told you before, that I do believe um, you know, the early March timeframe, we should be back down into at least the beige, if not the yellow, um, is my hope. So that's the update in terms of the metrics that you have. Um, the next sheet uh, just simply um, reiterates our implementation uh, capacity as far as the mitigating strategies uh, offered by the CDC. Uh, the next page is the matrix uh, that you've grown accustomed to seeing. Um, and again, while the, uh, the current for today um, keeps us right where we are, uh, I am very encouraged by the numbers and I'm hopeful that when those, when at least one of those markers move back to the, uh, to the beige or even the yellow, that'll allow those arrows on the, um, on the x-axis, the top one, uh, to then move, to, um, move down to the left. Uh, which should then give us the, uh, uh, the ability to expand um, the students that we are offering in-person learning to, or at least justify that. So on the next page, um, this was the recommendation page that I offered last Wednesday. I have updated it for you. Um, based on your conversation, your work last meeting and the discussion you had with the principals, um, I'll, I'll move to the bottom. Um, First, before I, I make the recommendation, I want to let everybody know that here in this school Sunday, we had the opportunity um, to partner with the Virginia Department of Health and we had our second dose clinic open. And um, I just want to express my extreme gratitude. While I feel a little under the weather today, I told Ms. Gonzalez that I've never been so thankful to feel so bad. Um, but many, many people worked very hard. They were here all weekend setting up um, so that our community, uh, in particular, our staff could receive that second dose of vaccine. So I'll, I'll repeat, you know, it looks like the metrics are coming together. The, the vaccine administered yesterday, you know, the two weeks that we talked about at the Wednesday work session um, would take us to March 8th. And so I do uh, maintain my recommendation I offered last Wednesday that we provide in-person instruction uh, for those who choose in grades three through six beginning March 8th. And then I also recommend that we provide in-person instruction uh, for those who choose in grades seven through 12, beginning March 22nd. And that is the first week when we come back from spring break. So we'll have one week of in-person with our three through six students. Um, we go out on spring break and immediately when we come back and we would offer to our secondary students, uh, or we would begin with our secondary students, the uh, in-person instruction as they've chosen. Happy to answer any questions or entertain any discussion. All right, well, thank you. So do we have, have a motion to approve Dr. Benson's Question, recommendation? Discuss. We'll discuss after we make a motion as an action oh, item. Yes, I'm sorry. Anyway. I move that we uh, accept Dr. Benson's recommendation. Um, to provide in-person instruction on the hybrid model for those who choose in grades three through six beginning March 8th. I also recommend that we provide in-person instruction on the hybrid model for those who choose in grades seven through 12 beginning March 22, which is the week after spring break. Second. All right, any discussion? So, I, um, so when we talked to um, Dr. Boyd last week about, you know, why we couldn't have an instructional model where we have both in-person and virtual at the same time, and he, you know, gave us um, some reasonings that it, it just wasn't feasible. However, there's a lot of other jurisdictions um, and surrounding jurisdictions that are doing it, Caroline being the closest, and um, also Northern Virginia, Southern Richmond area, uh, and I'm, I just would like for us to, to possibly have a little bit more since we're not going to be going back to March 22nd to have the opportunity to look at that possibility a little bit further. Um, because, you know, we've, we've also heard from a lot of jurisdictions that have been practicing the hybrid model that there are some flaws in it. We've heard some, you know, gotten some emails and some teachers and, and parents have also come up and said, you know, it's it's limiting the face-to-face the -face time and it's it's not as 
um, there, I guess we haven't gotten as much positive feedback as we had hoped to. So, you know, I think the more that we have the kids in school, um, I think the K through uh, three or two is working a little bit better. And if there's some way that, that we could do a four day return and incorporating the virtual and the in-person simultaneously um, would be beneficial. That's an option. Any other discussion? Is there any amendment? Is, there a, is that an amendment to the motion or is that just a discussion? I think it's a discussion item. So, I mean, I, I think that, yeah, I think it would be more of a discussion item if we could look at that a little further. But the other thing we have to take into consideration is that, you know, we, we are setting a precedent for, you know, what our, our objectives were possibly opening up next school year. We haven't started talking about that yet, but I think that we have to take that into consideration. Um, as we're making like this decision, it's vital to consider that as well. Madam Chair, may I? Yes. Ms. Um, uh, Ms. Pansier, so are you thinking uh, that we would uh, do anything differently with the three through six grades? Um, I, I understand you're saying that March 22nd does give some time for the staff to tweak the model or uh, revise the model or update the model, I, I guess. Uh, but would we ask that the same thing happen with the three through six or would we leave the three through six as it is? I would like to see it all happen. You know, I, I think that we've gotten enough pushback about the hybrid model, the blue gold system not working working as well in Spotsy and Stafford. Um, that I, I think that if we're able to make uh, make it work for K through two, that we should be able to try to utilize that through three through six, which I believe Ms. Harris was talking about. Uh, you know, they're they're ready to go. So I don't know if that was just on the hybrid, but you know, I'm just kind of curious to see if we, we could you know look at this a little bit more now that we've got a little bit more feedback from the public. And I've also reached out to some other districts in the area with some feedback as well. I spoke, if it helps, um, I spoke to Mrs. Harris today to clarify that, um, and you're correct, they are ready to go, however, they are ready to go with everything planned on the hybrid schedule. Um, you know, I think at both the elementary and the secondary level, um, I'm certainly anxious to get started with the in-person. I do believe that we'll use um, the time that we have in person to learn lessons and to possibly then seek out adjustments we might be able to make you know, once we see it in action. And I, I agree with you, Ms. Pincer, that um, you know, while I certainly hope um, the fall brings you know, normalcy, um, I don't think it would be prudent to be dismissive of the possibility that we may be setting a precedent or at least learning lessons now in these final nine weeks about how we could then expand possibly um, at the beginning of the year. That's not to exclude any kind of adjustment now. That's simply saying that um, the three through six, I know that's all set and ready to go. And I do know that that committee or that subcommittee did look at, at trying to maximize instructional time as best they can, giving deference to those youngest learners as the state terms in terms of those priority learners. Staffing wise is really where we, we hit the looking at four days a week for all the grades in elementary. Um, I believe we would have required the hiring of additional teachers, which we just we don't have to, they're not there to be hired right now. But that said, we can look as we get into this and see how it's going and then make recommendations for a um, for future week. What um, What's the hurdle for bringing all students back? I mean, I think we've crossed every hurdle. Is it, what, what, what hurdle is left? Tell me, please, somebody. Us? Anybody. Are you talking about five days a week as we were like two years ago? I'm saying, what hurdle do we need to get these kids back to school? What What's left? Distancing. Well, the mitigating strategies that are. Okay, we got the mitigating strategies. Well, we wouldn't be able to implement the distancing in with Fidelity if we had everybody back. What's, it, what's, what's recommended by the CDC is if they don't, don't have mitigation, is to, is to have those um, distances. So we met every mitigation strategy that the government has the recommendation recommendations from the scientists and the government is to go back to school and got the vaccines out 
And so what would stop us from going to school in two weeks other than SOLs or um, the other testing? How will we transport all students with physical distancing? Because the buses are not, the, the buses don't have an air quality installation as the buildings do. Right, so but you, they're working on that. So, Is that correct? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Okay, Holland. I just so, since we're on that, Ms. Pensier, let Ms. Yeah. Collins finish his thought. So, then. well, I, it's, I just wanted to go off of what Mrs. Um, Hawk had said, so that we don't lose that. And I believe Dr. Benson had said last week that uh, Valerie has possibly submitted the purchase order to get that. Yeah, and, and the funding source for that could be. Um, so, so you get on a bus and you sit next to somebody you have a mask on and you get you get to school and you get the um stuff to wash your hands you have a mask and you go to school why why wouldn't they be able to sit together so i would like to i would like to comment that the new cdc guidance since we like to talk about the cdc guidance and how the cdc recommend wants kids back in school so with the new guidance that has come out um, so, and this, I, are, these are taken directly from the, the, the documents that have been put out. So, consistent implementation of layered mitigation strategies to reduce transmission of COVID-19 in schools is part of the CDC guidance. Um, considering indicators of community transmission to reflect the level of community risk. Phase mitigation and learning mode based on levels of community transition. And the following, the following health, public health efforts provide additional layers of COVID-19 prevention in schools. Um, testing, other things, uh, vaccination for teachers and school staff and in communities as soon as supply allows. And the last that I think is the critical piece, saying the schools providing in-person instruction should prioritize two mitigation strategies, universal and correct use of masks at all levels of community spread and physical distancing at least six feet should be maximized to the greatest extent possible. To ensure physical distancing, schools should establish physical distance at least six feet between people. So that is to say that despite the fact that we have mitigation strategies, this is still the CDC guidance in the presence of COVID-19. And so that I believe is why the buses will remain a, a topic, the physical distancing and therefore the resulting scheduling challenges that we heard a lot about last week. All of that is in accordance with the CDC guidance. Okay, so, so ask the question, what, what is not getting us back to um, school all in person and the answer I hear now is there's no filtration system on the buses. Mm -hmm. How much does that cost? How much does that cost? Uh, it's, I don't mean to jump in front of everybody, but I think it's um, you know, to have every student in the building, obviously we would not be able to maintain even the distancing that we promised thus far, which honestly is three feet with masks and that's from the APA, from the previous guidance. Ms. Gonzalez is correct that uh, a week ago Friday, I believe CDC came out uh, you know, with their reinforcing the six foot as the gold standard. Um, but to answer your question, Mr. Collins, that's really it. The, the distancing mitigation strategy um, as a key strategy could not be implemented with fidelity if you were to bring more students than we currently have planned. In the building. So I would like to ask Ms. Tolliver uh, if she has any comments online um not at this time thank you okay so dr benson you had mentioned that um we'd also have to hire more teachers so if you know i, I think that you know first of all the the cdc is it's a recommendation of six feet it doesn't say mandatory and there's other risk mitigation measures that we have taken when one is seven hundred twenty four thousand dollar ionization system I'm here with the plexiglass and, you know, I'm sure that there's possibly, some, you know, if, a, if the bus transportation is an issue, there are some other risk mitigation strategies in addition to um, what the CDC guidelines state that we could come up with. I mean, that's the whole purpose of why this is a recommendation and not, you know, necessarily um, something that says that we have to abide by all of them. And it's, it's you know, it, it's a, a gray area. It's not a hard line that we need to, um, you know, discuss openly. I mean, obviously with you know, we, we just had some normalcy here this tonight, which was amazing with some of our um, oh, contestant winners and the uh, scholarship, but there was not social distancing practicing 
going on here. They were within three feet, sometimes shoulder to shoulder, and they weren't even siblings, including the teacher uh, that was here. So, you know, I think that it, it just goes to show that there, you know, these are recommendations and these aren't hardcore um, indicators or, or hardcore requirements, I guess I should say, that we have to abide by. And we've also talked about the busing in the past and possibly having people being able to bring their students in and, and you know, getting in carpools and things of that nature. So I don't know for sure that that is an absolute deal breaker. Okay, any further discussion? Um, yeah, I do, I do, Madam Chair, I do have a comment if I may. Certainly, Ms. Holler, then we'll give Ms. Huck. So, but that goes both ways. There have not been any mandates. There have been recommendations all throughout this whole situation. So it, it goes both ways that they're not hard and fast, that we don't have to follow them, or it's not hard and fast that we do. So because we seem to be choosing to err on the side of caution, in my opinion, um, it, it's the same argument on the other side of that. So we can't distance social distance appropriately on buses. We can't keep six feet apart in classrooms or possibly even three. Um, yes, we have an ionization system, which we've discussed several times that is good for, for years and years and years to come. It's just not just COVID related. Um, so again, it's how much risk are we willing to accept? And I think that argument that Ms. Pensaire made can go on the other side as well. Okay, Ms. Hawk. Yes, um, I, I, I have, I can't say strongly enough how important it is for me personally to get my grandchildren back in school because my hair is turning grayer every day. Now, the fact is that until our risk of transmission goes down at least one, we, we cannot bring, we cannot consider it. We are in the highest risk of transmission. Now, it has decreased rapidly as it is pretty much in general. And um, we had a very, very active discussion about the fact that with a community positivity rate um, at, at the highest level, that, that it's not wise or safe or um, free of liability for that matter to bring students back. Now, however, we as a community um, and we being people in your homes can make that transmission rate go down by getting vaccinated and wearing a mask and not gathering and not going out for a spring break. We can make this happen and frankly, if we are continuing to meet weekly, then, and uh, I'm, I'm very ready to be here at any point in time, when that transmission rate and the positivity rate goes down to a, a moderate risk of transmission, then I'm certainly willing to entertain whatever the staff can do in terms of getting as many students back in as possible. But I don't think we can entertain that until the transmission rate and the positivity spread go down. I would also like to point out and remind everyone that based on the results of the last survey, we actually have more, the majority of the student population is actually remaining virtual. Um, so you know, there's a lot of talk about the majority want to get back in school. And yes, many do. We all want to be back in our kids to be back in school at some point in time. But it is worth remembering that at this point in time, we've seen a, the trend, much as the trends have changed on paper with respect to local metrics, our own trends in the community have changed and people have been erring on the side of having their students remain virtual. Um, and so while there are a lot of valid points for discussion, um, yes, K through two is doing that now, but I would I would counter a point made earlier to say that our K through two students are, there's still a split that is still a hybrid model. Um, you know, there's still half, you know, half of the population is virtual and half is not. And we've heard from our principals that, you know, we know that instruction, the instruction models change, the older students get and that same model can't necessarily apply. It applies to kindergartners, doesn't always apply to high school students. Um, so it's, 
I'm, I can, as I said last week, I am still in full support of the recommendation made by Dr. Benson that is based on the feedback from our staff um, and their professional opinions on what works for them, um, what they have seen and heard and read about other happening in other divisions, and that is their recommendation. So I personally am in support of the recommendation made by Dr. Benson earlier this evening. So I'm, I'm not in not in support, but I, I do would like to see a clear picture to in-person learning. So every meeting I come to, the bar seems to change. And I just want to know what the bar is. So now I'm hearing the moderate range um, is the one bar now. And that's, that's also, just, I'm sorry, Mr. Hold on, Ms. Yes. And, um, just and, personal. and then the uh, bus filtration system. I just want to make I'm sure I'm clear that what the bar is for in-person um, schooling. Madam Chair, may I clear, may I clarify and then that, that I said in my mind, that is a personal opinion that a moderate risk of transmission is where we stayed for quite a while back when, and that when, and, and I, I do want to say when, when we go down to whatever level, I, you choose the level, I, I you know, I, that's just my opinion that when we go down to an appropriate level of transmission, then we need to be open to making uh, amendments, as Ms. Pansiera said. Um, that, and I, I think we can start planning for those amendments um, earlier. If the staff could, could plan for changes as the transmission rate goes down, then we meet weekly and could be ready to review those plans. What's the appropriate rate? So, uh, you know, we're, we're, that, look, we're hearing a couple of things. In, in Go ahead. The, the premise of this, are you suggesting we not offer a virtual option that everybody come back to school? I'm asking when will the bar be set? What, what bar has to be set? in order for our kids to go back to school. Like, well, our students I think we're looking to accommodate every mm -hmm. student that's chosen to go back in person. So I think uh, with, yes. with this. all students. Okay, what, so no virtual bar? option is what you're envisioning? No, no, no. I'm asking, well, I'm envisioning as everyone talks about normal. Everybody refers to a couple of years ago as normal. So I'm at, I want to know what the bar is, what has to be reached, what has to be done in order to us to go back to school in person, 100%. Um, so I, I mean, it's, it's changed over time. And, and so what I hear tonight is the two things I just brought up was an appropriate, which I thought that the answer was moderate which you said earlier, and then the bus filtration system. I, I still confuse as far okay, as 100%. Okay, so hold, Ms. Pansier, yes, just a second. Yes. All kids going to school. So I think it's, it's Mr. Collins, if I, let me see if I can clarify this. So I think what you're trying to say is that you would like to have a, a return option at 100% that kids would go five days a week, full days as an option to with the 100% virtual. Is that pretty much what you're saying? To have that option for them. When you say 100% return, that's what you mean. 100% five days a week, all day long, but not necessarily to take away the virtual but to have the choice between 100% virtual or 100% in-person. Is that correct? Well, no, not really, but that's okay. Um, I mean, the, 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 um, the um, motion's on the table and um, it'll come to a vote here in a moment. But I, but I, what I wanted to know was what, what will it take for King George students to be all back in school? Without a virtual option. Without a virtual option, you know, back to normal. And so if, if I'm clear, I, I, I've repeated it three times now, but, so, but nobody said that I was clear. Is it the moderate rate and the bust um, stuff to make them go back to school? Will that, will that, will that be the, the thing? So I think because we have deliberated over this at our last meeting as well as this evening, I think that answer is on, it's an, an important point, um, but it is, unrelated to the recommendation at hand. So I recommend we move forward with voting on the motion and 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 revisiting the discussion of what our next step is at a future meeting, which 
anyone is welcome to, we can add that to an agenda item. We can have, you know, we can do that. Um, but I think for the purpose of this evening's vote, um, I recommend we, without further objection, we. I, I would like to. Can we can do a roll call, please? Can we what? What? Roll call for the vote. So she has another time. I, I just wanted to make a comment. I was wondering if if there's some way that we could. Um, I guess things tend to get a little lost just in general across the board for everybody here and other districts. But if we could make make the recommendation that the three through six would be with the hybrid, uh, but continue to look to see if we could get them back similar to the K through two and maybe put a hard date of you know either the March 22nd or you know maybe two weeks into the, the next semester as that hard date of, of asking the um, the administrators if we could possibly work towards that four days a week and then maybe by that time we would have the bus infiltration system and a little bit more clear guidance from CDC and maybe some lifts lifting of, uh, of regulations based on how well the numbers are, are coming down and then also I would like to to um, you know just have the hard fast date of March 22nd of returning as in person but I would also just like to see if we could get one more um, look from the middle school and the high school to see if there's any way possible that we could change that as well. Just as a recommendation. Okay, so at this time, I'd like to call a vote. So I, I just asked for a recommendation to alter the. So there's a motion on the table. The motion. Is there a amendment? I just, yes, made a recommendation to amend the amendment. Or to amend, I'm sorry, to amend the motion. What's the minor motion? So the amendment would be that we would accept the uh, hybrid for three through six with the stipulation that we would continue to work towards a, uh, a learning, um, I'm not sure what to call it, I'm going to mix the words here, uh, to start. Um, the in-person uh, model a little bit closer to what we currently have with the four day a week uh, and look into seeing to be able to open that up possibly the March 22nd or two weeks after the next the last grading period um, and then also to just continue to go with the March 22nd opening for the uh, middle school and the high school but also to ask if they could look to see if we could do four days um, with the virtual and combined virtual and in-person um, for the March 22nd as well. So, I think the, um, so giving hard dates of, of starting, but asking that we just do a little bit more research in the model. The, model, the, the minor motion is too uh, broad um, to um, add to the, the uh, motion on the table. Man, it's pretty large. I don't even understand what you said. <laughs> could you could you um, could you entertain the motion as presented? But could you then look at and it would be helpful if after we get these kids in, maybe two weeks after that, into the nine weeks, at a work session, the the topics you are describing, make sure those are agenda items to bring back to the board at that time. Yes, as long as in this motion it's under the stipulation that it will be further reviewed. Maybe if we just do that, if we excite, you know, we we go ahead with the motion, but amend it saying that we will continue to look at the model, the instructional model, and in hopes that we could possibly modify that in the future this year. May I offer, so the dates, so March 8th would, is in two weeks, March 22nd is, would be our following regular meeting after that. The week of the 29th, which would be in keeping with what Dr. Benson just recommended would be the week after, we would have had a week with, um, three through 12 uh, back in person hybrid as presented, we could have a work session that evening to discuss the next steps for further consideration. Why would we wait that long for a work session? That was kind of what you recommended. You wanted to approve, no, I, you, you wanted to approve, I heard that we wanted to approve the motion on the table and then also caveat that with with further consideration so we could have that further consideration at the on the 29th which would be a week after 3 through 12 had returned so i Hybrid. 
in hopes that on the 29th Wait, we would hold be starting on, Mr. That, Collins. that we would we could possibly have the poss we would have the possibility of being able to open it up for four days. So I think that we need to have work sessions from now until that March 29th so that we can see if there's a possibility of us extending that. So we want to ask session. the administrators to bring our students back in person for the first time in a year and at the same time be planning their next reiteration of the plan versus having them make work what they're implementing now. Yeah, I don't understand why that is a big deal. No, I'm, I mean, so, they've got committees that have been working on this and they've looked at that. So it's not like they're starting from scratch, not knowing what they're doing. Okay, was well, there, do we have, do we have a, first of all, I would like your, can you restate your amended motion more succinctly? So we would accept the hybrid for three through six with the understanding that we would consider looking at coming in the four days a week through work sessions and having the administration look at that so that we could possibly start that the second week of the final fourth quarter and that we would continue working towards the four days a week for the high school accepting the march 26 as the hybrid or the 22nd as the hybrid in the hopes of that possibly starting the second week of the fourth quarter I think there's too much considering and hoping in that for that to be an amendment to others. However you want to word it so that we don't just sit here and say, okay, we've made a motion, this is what we're going to do, and then we don't do anything and we don't consider anything further after that. When no. is our, Madam Chair, when is our next regular meeting? On the March 8th, which March will be March 8th, which is two weeks from today. Okay. The week after that is spring break. March 22nd is the following regular meeting. Yes. Um, we are planning on having a work session on March 1st. Is that correct? That's what we, we from today. We, we can. That's what we've is, been doing. Yes. So what's on the agenda for the work session on March 1st? So that's where I think it would be having the administrators looking to see what's the viable option of having three through six coming in at four days and uh, seven through 12 coming in at four okay, days. Okay, so can you restate your amendment to capture that? I, I think I said that and that we would continue through that process to have the administration look at opening schools up the second week of the fourth quarter for four days for, for three through 12. So we're going to, okay, so the motion is that we will start school at the hybrid as presented last week for K three through six on March 8th. We will tentatively set that we will start the hybrid as presented for the for 7 through 12 on March 22nd. So from now until March 22nd, we will look to see if there's a possibility that we can extend that to the four days with the hopes that we will be able to do 3 through 12 four days by the second week of the last quarter. May I ask a question? Ms. Tolliver, yes. What is the, uh, Ms. Pansera, you keep referring to the second week of the fourth quarter. Can can you give a date? I'm trying to figure it out. I can't, I'm trying to figure that out too. What is the so in there, we have a week of spring break and I don't think we're expecting our staff to have to work that week. So I'm just wondering when we can fit in all of this or they can fit in all of this extra um, data or information that you're asking for. So the quarter starts the 29th. Oh. That's the last quarter. That's right. That's nice. Okay. So, March? so just for my own clarification, um, we have a motion and a second on the table, and I understand there's been a lot of discussion, and it's being asked that we look at doing things um, possibly sooner than what it is the motion says. So, so I think as a matter of um, protocol, those are two separate motions. So there was a motion made, Madam Chair. So there I, there was, there's an amendment. an amendment. I was waiting for it. I understand there's an amendment, but the amendment can't Hold override on. the original motion, can it? Okay. All right. Thank you, Ms. Oliver. Yes, you're correct, Mr. Collins. There's an amendment on the table. I was waiting to get a more succinct amendment so that we could get a second and understand what it is that we're voting on. Yes, ma'am. So, so was I. Okay. So, in a so more succinct fashion. April 17th? What is the 17th? 
Is that correct, Ms. Ms. Hawk? We figured it out. It would be April 17th is the second. April April 17th is a Saturday. Oh, it's a April 17th is a Saturday. I'm sorry, you, you are correct. I was looking in May. So what day are we looking at? Um, so March 29th is the beginning of the next semester. That is correct. So 12th of April. For what? Of April. Would be what she is using as the date for the possible movement to four days a week for K-12. Correct. Is that correct? Correct. Can you state the motion? I and mean, if we can do them, I'm sorry. Yes, yes, restate, yes. Okay, so let's restate it and let's try to simplify this and saying that, mm -hmm. so amend the motion that we will start the schools at the hybrid for K through three on March 8th and we will start, and we will start the hybrid for the high school at March 22nd with the intention of having all, K through 12 return four days a week beginning April 12th. Is that what you said? April 12th. Second the amendment as stated. So I want to clarify because there are a number of errors in there. So the amendment was for three through six, not K through three, three through six to return hybrid on March 8th. Correct. And then seven through 12, not just the high school, seven through 12 for to return March 22nd. All of those are in hybrid for those who have chosen hybrid with a date of what? With the in intention of us, in the meantime, looking at getting all of the kids K through 12 back four days a week starting April 12th. Why don't we say uh, with a request to the staff to assess April 12th as the return date of four days? That would work. So, so yeah. you want the information on the 12th or do you want no no we'll be working no we'll no that would be the start date for four days a week so that's where we would start having work sessions starting march 1st to see how we can prepare in order to get that implemented starting so april 12th so to remind if we, we heard from the administrator specifically dr boyd about how in the instructional model we don't have the teachers dr benson just said that a minute ago we don't have the we don't have the capacity to to do that so and that's where I, I challenge just a little bit second and now it's discussion okay right? well it's taking us a while to get to an amendment okay so and that would be something that we would discuss in the in the work sessions okay so the end the end of the motion for the 12th april date is is that that's an a target date for having or for having all for having k through 12 for those that choose in person returning four days a week on april 12th yes, correct virtual still as an option absolutely we're exploring that. Ex right exploring that option. so what does exploring that option mean we'll bring the data in terms of capacity we'll bring the numbers to, to the board i imagine it'll come down to um you know, I know at the three through six, having spoken with Ms. Harris today, it's going to come down to capacity in terms of staff, given we are hosting two different modalities at the same time. Yes. Um, it will also come down to um, to spacing as a primary, you know, as a mitigating factor. So, I mean, that'll that'll be the picture I anticipate we would bring back to you to then make a decision as a board in terms of any, you know, your your level of risk that you're willing to take in terms of. Um, increasing the number of suits in person correct i think that gives so, us the time Jack, as the board the to oh, I, i'm trying to write it down because it's a little bit convoluted yeah. so approve dr benson's recommendation that he presented earlier and state the rest in 30 words or less so we would with a okay. request to assess that we would have all K through 12 return to a four day instructional model by April 12th. To assess a K through 12 return for K, for four, return four days a week. K through 12 by April 12. 12th. With a request to assess K through 12 return four days a week by April 12th. 12th. So we are assessing by April 12th or having students in person on April 12th? Well, we will have- Target date. I don't understand how we have a target date and an amendment in a motion. We, it's gotta be actionable. So a request to assess. 
So what is our assessment? That we will open to four days a week to K through 12 on April 12th. Okay, so all right, all right, let's okay. So we'll vote on the amendment, which is to approve Dr. Benson's recommendation as stated earlier with a request to assess the K through 12 return four days a week for an April for 12th. a targeted April 12th start date. April 12th start date. I mean, we put a motion on the table before where we would come back in person when safe. That is about as broad as we could ever get. And so, so we're trying to improve. Yeah. So we're trying to improve it a little bit by giving a target date so that we could give staff time to see if what the feasibility is of, of that actually happening. Understood. Okay. So that being said, we'll vote on the amendment to the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Ms. Tolliver? Nay. Chair votes nay. Motion carries. So the motion is now to approve Dr. Benson's recommendation of providing in-person instruction on the hybrid model for those who choose in grades three through six beginning March 8th, 2021 and to provide in-person instruction on the hybrid model for those who choose in grades seven through 12, beginning March 22nd, with a request to assess K through 12 return four days a week for a target date of April, target start date of April 12th. So, excuse me, Madam Chair, I, I'm, I'm very confused. Oh, hold on, Ms. T okay. Can we, have a, can we have a roll call on that? We need a second. Discussion on that? What do you mean rule? We already voted on it. That, no, we voted on amending the motion. So now oh, we're voting. Yes. Now the oh, sorry, okay. The main motion. So now the main motion, we're going to a vote on the Which main motion? motion. So what just happened on the amendment? So we had a discussion about amending the motion and we voted on the amendment, but we never voted on the original motion. So I'm a little the confused about what, what did we just vote to do? We voted to amend the motion. So now the motion is what we just voted to amend. Okay. We're back to the main motion. Is there any further discussion? Can you read it again, please? I'm sorry. Okay, so it's to approve Dr. Benson's recommendation of returning on March 8th and March 22nd for three through six and seven through 12 respectively in the hybrid model for those who chose in-person instruction with a request to assess a K through turn K through 12 return four days a week for a targeted start date of April 12th. So to assess a start date of April 12th. Yes. Okay. And, and we're aware we we're aware we have SOLs in April as well. So when the, when, the, when you call the question, it's supposed to be brought to the vote. Will be amended. It's a little confusing, Mr. Collins, about what's the amendment and what's the motion. It's kind of hard. Okay, well, that is, that is your amendment. So, so I make a motion that we accept. So I've been made and seconded. Okay. Okay. So, all right. So, the motion as stated to approve Dr. Maxman's recommendation stated earlier ad nauseum with a request to assess K through 12 return 40 a week for. Targeted start date of April 12th. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm not even sure what I'm voting for right now. So I'm going to say nay. I mean, if I'm approving Dr. Benson's recommendation, oh, I vote Ms. aye. Ms. Tolliver, that's fine. You voted nay. Chair votes nay. Motion carries. Thank you. All right. So moving on to. Our second action item, the Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Award. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Again, this is before you uh, for action this time. It was presented last meeting uh, as a discussion item, but we have been notified that we are eligible for uh, $1,371,409 um, from the CARES II uh, award that's being um, dispersed by the state. Again, just for the public, this is uh, uh, something that we need this board to approve acceptance of. 
that way the county can set up a funding code um, for the uh, for the expenditures uh, so that those expenditures can be accounted for uh, at the county level. Appreciate your consideration. Madam Chair. Mr. Collins. May I make a motion to accept the Corona Relief Fund CARES II for the amount of $1,371,409. Um, Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Ms. Tolliver? Aye. Chair Vitz, aye. Motion carries. Can we get that on the agenda for the um, how the money will be allocated, please? Certainly. That would be a discussion item. Is that correct, Mr. Collins? Yes, discussion. Many discussions. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so. Okay, we'll flesh that out. All right, so, all right, at this time we're moving on to our information items. Do we have any committee reports? Ms. Pantera? No, I do not. Ms. Hopp? Yes. Um, I uh, sadly was unable to attend the uh, Chesapeake Bay Governor's School uh, meeting, um, having lost power and could not get into the Zoom. Um, but I will continue to, to try to uh, make an effort to get that information and bring it back for the next meeting. Secondly, the bylaws uh, committee uh, feels that it is ready to bring uh, the information to the board for discussion and would like to place it on the next agenda. Next regular agenda? Next regular agenda. Not at a work session. That's up to you, Ms. Gonzalez. If you'd like to put okay. it on the discussion as a work session, that's fine. Okay. Sounds great. I will got it. Anything else, Ms. Hoff? No, ma'am. Okay. Mr. Collins? Yes, ma'am. Committee reports? No, ma'am. Ms. Tolliver? No, ma'am. Thank you. All right. Um, I do not have any committee reports. So uh, moving on to the superintendent's report, Dr. Benson. Again, I just wanted to express my appreciation to everyone who took part uh, in Sunday's event here at the high school, in particular, uh, Ms. Fisher and um, the group that she works with. I know there are many volunteers here. Friday through Saturday, cleaning ice, making sure things were safe for us to host that clinic. And uh, I sincerely appreciate all their efforts going above and beyond to help the community and our staff. Thank you. All right, thank you, Dr. Benson. Board comment, Ms. Pantera. Um, yes. So uh, I just wanna say, I, it, it gave me a little bit of chills tonight to have a little bit of normalcy with um, the um, presentations for the Healthy Poster Contest winners and the uh, Broadwood Space Camp Scholarships. I believe Mr. and Mrs. Broadwood are still here. No, it's not Bradshaw. Bradshaw. Bradshaw, sorry. No, Broadwood. Well, it's called the Brookwood. Broadwood, Broadwood but they They're are Broadwood. Mrs. Okay. Bradshaw. All right, I'm terrible with names. Um, but I think that's a, a wonderful thing that they do for our community, um, and I really appreciate that. And just having that little bit of normalcy, having the kids back in here, um, and the parents, and having a little bit of celebration was um, amazing. And thank you, Mrs. Um, Richards, for um, spearheading all of that. Um, also, I just, you know, I, I want to maybe apologize a little bit for the confusion that we had up here, but I am ecstatic that we... Um, are moving in a direction to um, not only get our kids back into school, I, uh, I just want to make it clear that, um, you know, I, I am concerned with everybody's well-being and their safety. Uh, a lot of times, you know, we've heard from the board that it's not safe to come back to school. Um, I don't necessarily agree nor disagree with that. I think what is most important is that the families um, are able to make that choice for themselves and know what uh, is safer for their their family or more fair for their family. So I'm ecstatic that we're moving towards that uh, to allowing the families to have a choice in what works best for them. Um, so uh, also I'm looking forward to um, us getting a, the bylaws uh, in the work session or uh, in a discussion among the board members so that we can possibly have a little bit more order uh, in our um, in our meetings, we we've been struggling that uh, for some time now, and, and I'm looking forward to some type of resolution. All right, thank you, Ms. Pantera. Ms. Hawk. Thank you. Um, I want to say a couple of really serious thank yous. Um, 
to, uh, I'm going to echo doc, Dr. Benson, uh, there were an amazing number of people who, who were on hand yesterday. Um, everybody from Mr. Golden to, uh, apparently there's a, a Virginia Association of Retired uh, medical staff who were there. Uh, I heard one mention of a, a of a OBGYN doctor. Uh, there were there were there was National Guard here, and from Friday they they had been working effortlessly to get this set up. And and we our we need to say a thank you to uh, our county that supported this and Dr. Benson for making it happen. And then uh, I have to give a huge, huge thank you to Wonder Woman of the Year, Ms. Fisher. Um, Mary Fisher, I, I know the path of your role, and this has been expanded so many times beyond the scope of what any of us ever imagined that job would be. But she has, has been positive, she's been effective, I, I can't tell you how fortunate we are to have you in this role today. And uh, yes, I, I am feeling a, a bit of the effects of, of my vaccination, but I am delighted to have had it. And I'm looking forward to seeing grandchildren and uh, maybe planning another trip someday. I, I, and it does bring hope to see normalcy tonight, to, to see our space camp being, talked about again and our, our girls clearly interested in it and involved in it and their families here. That is such a positive. I, I can't tell you how, how thrilling this is at a, at a dismal time. This is what we needed tonight. Um, and I guess I do need to say that we, our nation did cross a, a very sad threshold today that we need to be mindful of. Our, our country hit 500,000 deaths due to COVID. Uh, our president is, uh, is, is lit a candle and is, uh, is declaring a memorial service. Uh, our flags will be flying at half staff for the next five days. 500,000 people have died and it is not over. So these, even that I've had, even when I have, when I'm two weeks past, I will be wearing this and I will continue to uh, until the science tells me otherwise. And um, I, I, I beg of our students and our families, please do not do the social gatherings that you think you may be entitled to, not yet. We hope to give you a venue to do those when it is safe. Please, I'm asking parents, grandparents, students, little guys are doing great. Please keep the effort going. We can get these numbers down. And so we can get more girls to, to space camp and, and hopefully more boys and, and see more Mars perse perseverance landings and um thank you thank you miss hawk mr collins thank you i'd like to thank you folks for funding the, the space camp um it brings great joy to my heart when citizens um step up for our youth and look for the future of what our future brings in this county i'd like to say thank you the um, young young um, folks that won the poster contest. Uh, that was I was glad to see them there in person. I hope that we can come to a clear and concise um, starting of schools in King George County. I think we're moving in a direction that's better than it has been in the past. Um, and um, I appreciate the the other boards member willingness to listen to each other uh, without um, uh, with other board members listening to each other. Um, I'd like to thank the new Wonder Woman. So Ms. Fisher, you will now from this day forward be considered Wonder Woman and we will address you as that. Thank you for the great job you did. I observed it. Um, 
not only did I observe it, um, but uh, in my family, um, I saw the emails come across that when it was canceled and it was re-upped and helping everybody get into the sites. And so I think we reached another milestone with our uh, employees, all employees that wanted the vaccine that were able to get it. And that will conclude my comments this evening. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Collins. Ms. Tolliver. Yeah, I'd also like to thank Ms. Fisher and her team and the county and all that worked very hard to get the vaccinations um, handled and processed. I heard there was the parking lot was packed Sunday at King George High School. So thank you, Mary Fisher, for doing an outstanding job. And I know you've been working over, over, over time lately. Um, I appreciate the Be Healthy poster contest winners and the Broadwood Space Camp Scholarship. Um, part of me wants to say that though, yes, there was some normalcy in those artists coming forward this evening. There's also some normalcy in the fact that they did the artwork and submitted it in the first place. So kids are still doing what kids need to do, even virtually. And I think that's kudos to our teachers and our staff. Um, I listen a lot to comments about getting kids back in school safely, but I also want to make sure that we get all of our staff in school safely. And um, Ms. Hawk made a comment about we hit the $500,000 death mark today in this country. And I think that's something to heed at times when we talk about moving forward um, more quickly than we maybe should sometimes. I don't know. We all want to see kids back in school. There's no doubt about that. But we want to make sure it happens in the most safe way possible. Um, I am not sure about the final discussion and the vote on the action item to return in person this evening. What just happened? It was a little confusing and convoluted, I think, to um, the public as well as to me. So. Um, my understanding is that we will return as recommended by Dr. Benson and continue to move forward for an um, even greater return of more students. I hope that's what um, was the understanding by all. Um, I also want to recognize that this is National School Board, Virginia School Board Awareness um, Appreciation Month, I'm sorry. Um, and I do appreciate all of you. It's been a difficult year. Everybody's very passionate about what they believe and where they'd like to see things go, but I do appreciate everybody's hard work and patience. I also wanna comment that I was not present at the work session last week because I was traveling to the out-of-state location where I am now, taking care of a family medical emergency. So I appreciate your patience with me as well. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tolliver. Um, so as for myself, I would, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, like to echo a lot of what has been said by my colleagues this evening. Um, yes, thank you to Ms. Fisher and all the other extraordinary individuals who have helped pull off the vaccination clinics. I know that's a monumental task. And I think it's amazing that in less than a year since our schools closed, here we are talking about teachers getting vaccinated and everyone else, um, others in our community. I just think that's amazing. Um, not to take away from over half a million deaths, which is heartbreaking. Um, thank you, Ms. Richard, for your continued advocacy for our students for bringing our poster contest winters, winners to the meeting. Um, it's a great opportunity to see children and uh, as well as some great artwork. So thank you for that as well. Um, to those involved with the Broadwood Space Camp Scholarship, I know um, got a little distracted there with the loss of audio, but I did want to say that as, a, as an engineer myself, it's very encouraging to see all of our young women, especially, um, thinking about that and pursuing those things already. I know things have changed a lot since the 30 years since I've been that age, so it's very encouraging. So thank you all for all that you've done to encourage that. Um, I'd like to state for the record why I did not vote in favor of the in-person learning motion this evening. I voted nay, not because I didn't support Dr. Benson's March 8th and March 22nd return dates, but because I do not agree with the amendment, which will increase the demands on our administrators and staff right when they are bringing our students back into buildings. Um, had the motion not been amended, I would have most certainly voted in favor. And lastly, I plan to register for the VSBA Hot Topics Conference, which is being held virtually on March 17th. Um, the topics on the agenda are particularly fitting for this year, which is why I wanted to comment on it. Um, the topics are the hidden biases of good people, school board and superintendents communicating as a team, and school segregation by boundary line in Virginia, scope, significance, and state policy solutions. I highly encourage my colleagues to register and attend this as well. And that is all I have. So at this time, uh, do we have a motion to move into closed meeting? 
could I make a clarification first? Uh, uh, so the stipends are added into that motion and there was a email today with the stipends. Is that included in the budget or is this a separate, some of those are separate items under? Uh, this is no clarification. What? It, it's simply the approval of stipends for certain personnel. I'm talking about closing, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's as There's normal. No, no add to the budget stipends for the closed meeting. No, certainly not in closed session. Okay, I'm just, just asking clarification. Thank you. I move pursuant to state code 2.2-3711.A.1 for the purpose of discussion consideration of prospective candidates for employment and assignments of stipends, resignation, substitutes, and retirements of employees of the school board. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Ms. Tolliver? I'm sorry, aye. Chair Vitz, aye. We are now in closed session.
We're ready. Is Miss Tolliver back with us? Good. Okay. Do we I have am. A, to return to open session. I move that the King George County School Board return to open session and certify pursuant to state code 2.2-3712.D. Only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements under this chapter and only such public business matters as were identified in the motion by which the closed meeting was conveyed were heard, discussed, and were considered in the meeting of the public body. Certify. Second. Certify. I certify. Stop. Stop. I certify as well. Okay, I certify. So do we have a motion to return to open session? Second. What? I second it. Second. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Yep. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So do we have uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, Chair votes aye. We are now in return to open session. Motion to accept the action resulting from closed meeting. Make a, a motion to accept the personnel as presented. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Collins? Yes. I said aye. I'm sorry to hear you. All right, Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Any discussion? Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. We are now adjourned.